Hello, I am Professor S. Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. Okay, let us continue our discussion on the atomic basis of elastic behavior. What we have seen uh, yesterday is uh, we have gone through some of the elastic behavior of crystalline materials in tension as well as uh, compression mode, right. What we have uh, seen is uh, something um, Yeah, this is the kind of uh, stress strain behavior we have seen and then we have uh, come to a conclusion that uh, the stress, uh, stress strain uh, ratio is high because the applied stress works in opposition to restoring force of primary bonds, for example, ionic covalent metallic bonds. Similarly, uh, we also started our discussion on the uh, non-crystalline material such as glass, cross-linked polymers uh, may also exhibit linear elasticity for their structure is such that distortion is opposed from the, uh, from the start by uh, primary bonds, okay. Uh, yeah, so again we looked at the um, typical elastic behavior of elastomers and uh, we have seen uh, we have seen that uh, the first physical activity in this uh, tension is uh, stretching of uh, chains in uh, sorry uh, first activity is uh, alignment uh, in, in the direction of uh, tension force and then further elastic elongation requires stretching of the chains in opposition to primary bonding forces and we have also seen that uh, there is a different significant difference between uh, uh, elastic response in tension versus compression in this class of material and that uh, we have uh, attributed that to the compressive stress applied to the elastomers initially causes a more efficient uh, filling of space and then the moment the, the space available for uh, filling then the resistance for the compression increases significantly. That is the uh, reason why you see the uh, significant uh, increase in the slope initially as compared to uh, tension forces here. So this is what we have seen. We stopped here and then um, we ended our uh, lecture yesterday. So we will continue this uh, our discussion in this direction. Now, I will show the other uh, type of elastic deformation behavior and what you can see is uh, it is exactly, uh, I mean it appears exactly opposite to what we have just seen uh, yesterday, right. So you see this elastic response in a tension um, domain like you know tensile force is uh, much steeper as compared to uh, in a compression mode, right. So very, very interesting behavior. So what kind of uh, material will exhibit this kind of behavior? So we are now trying, going to talk about elastic behavior in a compression and tension of a cellular materials that exhibit elastic buckling of cell walls under compression. So uh, the other class of material is cellular materials, okay. What are, what is, uh, what are cellular materials? The name itself uh, has some answer. Uh, the structure is made up of cells, the microstructure of these kind of materials made up of cells. There are a lot of examples, even uh, natural material wood is also considered a cellular material. So you have lot of cells. The cells could be open cells or it could be closed cells, it could be vacuum inside the cell or it could be some gas filled and depending upon what we uh, do in the processing procedure, right. So we will just talk about uh, those kind of material. So the one example, classical example is the uh, natural wood may be fairly stiff in compression until the stress is sufficient to cause elastic buckling of cell walls, at which point considerable strain may accumulate without much increase in stress, okay. So what is uh, shown uh, here is we are talking about 
um, a fairly stiff in compression until the stress is sufficient to cause elastic buckling of cell wall. So, we are talking about not primary bonds like in the other materials, we are talking about uh, the buckling of cell walls. I said the microstructure consists of cells. So, the cell wall elastic deformation of the cell wall uh, that is called buckling is uh, considered the uh, energy absorbing event here. So, so once the uh, cell become you know start, cells start becoming uh, or cells start to buckle then it also try to get compacted. The stiffness may then increase again as the cells become compacted okay. and uh, considerable non-linear strains may be recoverable in such substances. Of course, if the stress becomes high enough, the cell walls will crush and the strain may not then be recovered. So, that is also possible, but most of the you know you would have seen that uh, damping materials right, these uh, cellular materials are used for damping application. So, that means it can take lot of strain which may be recoverable you know large amount of strain, considerable non-linear strains can be uh, recoverable from such substances uh, beyond uh, I mean up to certain uh, point till the cells will start crushing. In tension clearly the cell walls do not buckle elastically in the same way as a typical stress strain curve is shown in figure. So, this is the reason why it looks uh, uh, I mean the energy absorbed in an elastic region is considerably small because of the, the buckling mechanism is not operational in the tension mode. So, so the cell walls do not buckle elastically, so it will be difficult. Okay, coming back to our uh, uh, condon Morse curve again, once again, um, just to give a completion of thermal effect. So, we, we just talked about uh, elastic response uh, by stress as well as temperature we said right. In order to change the shape or volume of a material, initially we said that there are two things which we can do, either we can load the material or apply the stress or change the temperature. These two things can bring some change in shape and volume of the material. So, we have, we have seen this uh, diagram already. Just to uh, complete our uh, elastic property also, we need to bring this aspect because uh, temperature also plays a significant role. So, what is, uh, what is shown here? Potential energy versus uh, distance diagram and this uh, you are now very much familiar that is D naught is in equilibrium position and, uh, and if you start increasing the temperature and of course, this equilibrium position D naught is uh, valid at uh, 0 Kelvin and as you move from 0 Kelvin to higher temperatures, then the material will tend to oscillate between these two positions okay, the A and B. Uh, the atoms will try to oscillate and as the temperature increases then the oscillation distance also increases right this is what we have seen yeah this is what we have seen already so clearly the because of the asymmetry of potential energy curve so this is asymmetric nature the mean spacing will increase with increasing temperature. This aspect also we have already seen just uh, for a completion here, I am giving it here. The linear thermal expansion uh, resulting from the temperature increase dt may be expressed as dl by l is equal to alpha dt. See where alpha is thermal expansion coefficient and l is the length at which the given temperature, dl is a change in length resulting from the temperature change dt. Okay. This also we have seen. So, now getting into the uh, again physical properties because of this um, temperature response, the sublimation temperature of material and its thermal expansion behavior and its Young's modulus all depend on the strength of bonds in the material. 
So, we were just relating the uh, bond strength with uh, elastic constants right earlier stiffness and all we have just seen. Now, we are also seeing that uh, sublimation temperature of a material is also connected to the strength of the material. So, it may be seen from the figure that when a Condon Moore's potential energy trough is very deep, okay, we are now talking about, yeah, the, this diagram is uh, interesting uh, diagram, you can see that. So, the Condon Moore's curve is of uh, different nature here. So, this is for what is written here, it is written strong, that means very deep. So, the trough is very deep then what, what, it, what it means? It is as it uh, for covalently ionically bonded solid and some metals of high sublimation temperature. So, uh, materials with the stronger bonds, ionic covalent or high melting point materials, their condom Moore's curve will have a, a deep, very deep trough like this. Okay. So, Similarly, the coefficient of thermal expansion is small and the energy necessary to cause the sublimation large and Young's modulus is high. So, these are the characteristic of when you have this potential well diagram is by just looking at the potential well diagram, you will be able to relate uh, these two thermal expansion coefficient, energy required to cause sublimation and Young's modulus. So, they will be very high for a material of this nature. So, if the potential energy trough is less deep for most solid with the metallic bonds and it is relatively shallow for those with the molecular bonds. So, see for the metallic bond we can relate this for a molecular bond like polymers this can be like this. Okay. So, such solids therefore expand, melt, sublime and deform under stress more easily. So, now we have, we are now relating, relating just by looking at a, you know, uh, potential energy curve, we are talking about deformation. So, this is, uh, this is idea uh, for which, you know, we have been discussing all this, uh, these days. So, when you have the, you know, a shallow potential energy trough, then it can, the material can easily melt, it, it can un easily subli sublimate or it undergo sublimation or it can undergo deformation with more easily. So, this is very important point, right, you have to keep in mind. So, the sublimation temperature is directly related to the depth of the trough. Young's modulus is inversely related to the radius of the curvature at the bottom of the trough and thermal expansion behavior is related to the degree of symmetry of the curve. So, these are the additional points. Uh, we have some general remarks whatever we have seen whether it is a deep, shallow or uh, you know uh, weak and so on. And further you can relate this symmetry of this curve to um, sublimation temperature, Young's modulus and thermal expansion behavior uh, through these three points. So, what, so what we are seeing here is. Uh, the, the important message what we are trying to give from this discussion is the bonding nature has a strong connection to its mechanical behavior, whether it is elastic or uh, plastic and so on. Okay. Right now, we are discussing elastic deformation. We will also see the plastic deformation uh, in due course. So, uh, next fundamental aspect I want to discuss is uh, a term called anelasticity. Anelasticity, very important uh, uh, terminology phenomenon. Uh, we all know this uh, uh, this terminology, but we, we may be just looking at the behavior directly in a day-to-day -day life, or uh, and uh, we may not be realizing that uh, that uh, you know what is happening to this material and so on. And uh, this is. Uh, this section, this section of this uh, lecture will be little descriptive, but conceptually it is very important. So, I, I want to uh, mention that, you know, uh, 
we will just discuss bit slowly so that you will not miss any important points. Okay. Uh, the migration of atoms, defects and thermal, thermal energy. We are talking about migration of atoms, defects, thermal energy or time dependent processes. This can result in a lag of strain behind stress. The dependence of elastic strain on time as well as stress is known as an elastic effect. So, we are, we are throwing lot of terms here. Um, each term is uh, uh, very tricky and important also. Okay? So, we are, we are talking about time dependent processes, a migration of atoms, defects, thermal energy and so on. This can result in a lag of strain behind stress. So, what does it mean? Okay. You may apply uh, a stress rapidly. You will not see the st strain effect immediately. Okay. It, may, it may happen, the strain effect will come as a time pass by. That is, what, that is the meaning of the lag of strain behind the stress. Right? You may do certain activity, uh, loading, unloading, right? heating, cooling. Uh, you can, we can do all these uh, activities in a much higher rate. Okay? So, the, all these activities are supposed to create some strain in the material, but the, the strain is not happening immediately, it is not happening immediately, then we say that or if the strain happens uh, or the strain uh, experience the material you can observe as a function of time, then we say that. Uh, the lag of strain behind the stress. So, that is the meaning of this. So, we are now going to discuss a uh, uh, lot of physical events which may, which may know, it, know it already, but we would not have connected to this concept uh, quite often. And we are going to look at all those physical events and then connect this with an elastic uh, property. Okay? So, the, uh, the definition is the dependence of elastic strain on time as well as the stress is known as an elastic effect. So, we are going to look at some physical event of an elastic effect. The material subjected to cyclic stress, the an elastic effect causes internal damping. Okay. What is this internal damping? A decay in amplitude of vibration and therefore a dissipation of energy. Vibrational energy in actual structures is damped out internally in this fashion and externally through joint friction, wind resistance, etcetera, etcetera. So, we are now trying to give uh, some direct physical events for this uh, thermoelastic effect. Okay. So, one of them is like uh, the one of the consequence I would say is the internal damping, damping behavior. So, you, you all know what is damping, right? Just, just now we have just discussed about, discussed about the cellular material which is also being used for the damping. You know, it, that means what? It absorbs lot of energy, right? So, what, 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 it, what it means? So, it, it takes load in a very high strain rate, it can take a quite uh, recoverable elastic strain, but then it can also you know relax as a function of time. Okay, so this is very important. We will also see the parameter a little a little later, something called relaxation times. Right. So this is a, a very important uh, aspect to uh, focus on. Okay. So that is internal damping. The decay in amplitude of vibration and therefore the dissipation of energy. So, this also we will see now. And these are all vibrational energy in actual structures is damped out internally in this fashion and then externally through joint friction, wind resistance and so on. Okay. So, the term and elasticity is applied to stress and time dependence of elastic strain. So, time dependence of elastic strain is an elasticity. Okay. 
we will be using this uh, uh, terminology later in plastic deformation also like you know we will be using this uh, again the same concept in when we discuss uh, high temperature deformation behavior called creep and so on right. So, this is a fundamental uh, starting point. The asymptotic approach of elastic strain to its equilibrium value with the passage of time after application of load is known as elastic after effect. So, there are different terminology people have given, but the physical event is the same. Okay. What is the physical event? Asymptotic approach of elastic strain. That means what? It, uh, the strain will start slowly coming down and it will never touch the 0. It will just go parallel to the, the lowest possible. It will try to go and uh, you know, these two curves will never meet. It will meet into, it will meet in the infinity. It will go towards infinity very slowly it will come down. So, that is asymptotic approach of elastic strain to its equilibrium value with the passage of time. Okay. So, that is important. For example, in structure subjected to cyclic loading or to vibration, the lag of strain behind stress cause dissipation of energy or damping. So, this is what I just said. This uh, very simple example is damping, vibration damping or it could be any other damping as well. Right. But uh, it is more easy to realize when the structure is subjected to cyclic loading. Vibration is also a yes, kind of a cyclic, right? It is not just constant amplitude vibration. It will go with some part particular frequency, right? So the energy may also be dissipated during isothermal monotonic loading by plastic or non-recoverable deformation. This phenomenon is known as creep. I just mentioned, right? We will look at this uh, plastic deformation, uh, high temperature plastic deformation. This also involves a non recoverable deformation that also can happen uh, as a function of time. So, first we will see some. Uh, uh, basic physics uh, behind this uh, thermoelastic effect. Um, there exists an interrelationship between the mechanical work done on the material in the elastic range. Please understand, we are now talking about only elastic property. Do not uh, uh, think that we are talking about plastic property. We are, we are still talking about elastic properties and all this load uh, stress we are talking about still in elastic region. So, the material is in elastic range and changes in its thermodynamic properties. What are thermodynamic, thermodynamic properties? Here we know right, lot of thermodynamic properties, enthalpy, you know, free energy, temperature, entropy and so on. Okay. So, the relationship here, inter, what are the inter interrelationship here? We are talking about between stress and strain that is mechanical work, work parameter. On the other hand, temperature and entropy of the material. This relationship is known as thermoelastic effect. So, the interrelationship between mechanical work and thermodynamic properties. Here, it is a stress and strain and temperature and entropy. So, how does it, how, how do they relate? Suppose that an elastic stress is applied to a rod so rapidly that the maximum stress is reached before the rod can exchange any thermal energy with its surroundings. So, this is exactly we are discussing about, right? We rapid loading, then what happens to the material? Okay. So, in this case, the elastic stress is applied to a rod so rapidly that the maximum stress is reached before the rod can exchange any thermal energy with its surroundings. Then what happens? The heat transferred to and from the rod is 0. So, the change in internal energy is caused only by the mechanical work done on the material and the stressing is isoentropic. Isentropic. 
okay. So, it may then be shown that for uniaxial adiabatic straining because it is there is no thermal exchange it is considered adiabatic straining then it can be written as dou t by dou epsilon at constant s is equal to minus v m alpha e t divided by c v. Most of the parameters you know dou t by dou epsilon at constant entropy represent the change in temperature with, uh, with respect to strain at constant entropy. V m is the molar volume of the material, E is the isothermal Young's modulus, alpha is uh, coefficient of linear thermal expansion, T is absolute temperature and C v is a specific heat at constant volume. Okay. So, this is the relation for uh, thermoelastic effect. Virtually all materials exhibit a volume expansion on heating, this we all know, right? all materials in general exhibit volume expansion on heating, but certain material gives opposite. You should just uh, guess or you would have seen this already. Since alpha is almost always positive, uh, therefore V, T, E and C, V are also positive. It may be seen that adiabatic elastic tension lowers the temperature of the material and adiabatic elastic compression raises it. Okay. So, these are the some of the salient features we have to note down. Then we will just look at uh, some examples. The temperature what we discuss here uh, is the uh, temperature change is usually small. You should not think that uh, it is a huge. Okay. The temperature effect which we talk about in all this is small. So, the behavior of stretched rubber provides an interesting contrast to the general behavior just discussed in that alpha. The coefficient of linear expansion is negative. Therefore, rubber heats up on rapid stretching and cools down on rapid compression. So, this is something you know uh, contradict to what just we just said. We said in general most of the material tend to expand on heating but there are exceptions. So, here we see that the, the stretched rubber, okay, the moment you stretch the rubber, the linear expansion, thermal expansion is negative. What could be the reason? The reason for a different sign of alpha is that with increasing temperature, the vibration and bending of the molecular chains of which the rubber, rubber is composed of increase to such an extent that the mean chain length decreases and that is the rubber shrinks. Okay. So, um, we, have, we have looked at some of this uh, basic uh, molecular chain for right in the previous classes. So, the vibration and uh, bending of the molecular chains uh, causes a mean chain length, a decrease in the mean chain length. So, which attributes to the shrinkage of this rubber while heating. So, that is one observation why it is giving a negative behavior. Okay. Now, what I am going to do is uh, uh, we are going to talk about uh, this thermoelastic effect in a much more uh, a realistic manner. And for that, I am just going to describe the two types of uh, um, stress strain behavior. And what is shown here is uh, uh, sigma versus epsilon. And you just uh, assume that any crystalline material is now uh, being, uh, you know, uh, warmed up or stretched, right? So when it's stretched, it's supposed to warm up that is the general behavior right so you just think uh, such kind of a situation when the material is uh, stretched uh, there are two kind of uh, stretching is possible like as i said a very slow stretching that means uh, also 
equilibrium stretching you can say that or, or we can do it very fast okay like why we discuss we, we described certain events before right we can do it very rapidly so uh, what you can see here is uh, there are two situation here adiabatic straining or isothermal straining okay suppose if i am straining a material slowly okay so this there is no um, problem uh, with uh, any thermodynamic uh, aspects this is called isothermal okay straining okay on the other hand if i stretch it very fast rapidly and i am not going to uh, get the the final strain which i am supposed to reach e i here instead i land up in e a okay instead of e i this is my original elastic strain if i stretch it slowly and if i stretch it abruptly then i reach a point a where i get only e a of the strain so that means this is there is no temperature exchange with the surroundings so this is adiabatic process and then if i allow that material to relax okay and then it warms up and then it relaxes to the strain ei so that is one way of looking at it okay similarly instead of unloading slowly which is all again will pass through this line i do it abruptly here then again it is exactly the opposite uh, you know things will happen thermodynamic properties thermodynamic temperature exchange and so on it will just it will not go to zero or that means it will not recover all the strain uh, instead it will go to a dash as the time passed by it will just slowly reaches its the original or equilibrium strain okay so uh, this kind of uh, a cyclic loading or cyclic event like uh, stretching and stretching or stretching relaxation involves some energy dissipation so that is the energy shown here so it is called uh, you know hysteresis elastic hysteresis loop the the hashed region here is the amount of energy involved in this process whatever i just shown this is an hypothetical situation but what is shown here is an actual energy per cycle okay uh, 0 to 0 obx sorry 0 bx or 0 uh yeah this again it can be i also you can put i so 0 bi and then i c o cycle so it could be either isothermal cycling or adiabatic cycling so that is the idea so with this uh, background we will now look at uh, uh, some other details the stress strain curve of a sample loaded and unloaded in a continuous cycle would resemble the loop ob ico shown in the figure instead of a parallelogram o a i a dash o okay